So turn to the back of this handout, to page 7. We're going to go back to the front in a minute. And so I want to start with some stories. Early in the career of Morton Hansen, he was working in a company, and he was working long hours, and he was putting in the time. And one time he needed to talk to a colleague named Natalie, and it was, you know, early evening, and he was frantic at work, and other people were there at work, and he said to somebody, I can't find Natalie. And they said, she goes home. <laughs> and he, he couldn't fathom that. <laughs> he didn't understand that concept. Goes home? And, and so the next day he talked to Natalie, and, and he looked at a couple of things she did, and, and he came to a conclusion that she did better work than he did, and she didn't work as many hours. That's a pretty big moment of self-discovery. So he wanted to figure out why. Next story. Oh, this is something. There's a guy, and I know I won't pronounce his name right, Jiro Ono. He's 92 years old. He's a sushi chef at a hole-in-the-wall sushi place that has three Michelin stars. He has spent decades doing 20 pieces of sushi. He sends his very well-trained buyer to buy a fish, the best fish available for the day. And if that buyer looks at the fish, the best fish available for the day, and says, it's not good enough, he doesn't buy it, they don't make the sushi. Starts with the best fish. He's trained somebody to make an omelet, and he makes them make 200 omelets before they're allowed to serve one to a customer. 200 omelets. Didn't talk about how many he had to eat. But. <laughs> and then uh, there was a woman who was quite successful in talent search, meaning hiring people, hiring talent. And, and she had a big offer, a, a demand from one of her clients. I think it was Coca-Cola, but it was a very big company. And they said, we want these people hired. And she gulped and she said, nope, that's not the expertise I'm focusing on. That's not the expertise that I am building. If I spend time doing that, I won't get as good as I want to get at finding the talent in this particular niche. And she turned it down. <clears throat> she turned it down. And then uh, there was a teacher in a school who kept trying to figure out we got to get things better. The school was in trouble. It was about to close. It was not passing the requirements. And so the teacher came up with an idea. I'll flip things. We'll do homework at school. And I'll record my lectures and they'll watch that at home. And they flipped it. And then the school adopted it. And it was Clintondale High School in Detroit, by the way. And it worked. So there it is. Now, he says in the book that there are four types of work. And he's got statistics on these, and you're, you'll be able to guess which one is the best kind of work. There are people who accept more and then coast. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that. But they don't do it exceptionally well. And then there are people who do less, no stress. They just don't work very hard. <laughs> And then there are people who do more, they accept more on their plate, and they work hard, but they're stressed out, and it turns out they're not all that successful at it. They're too pulled in multiple directions. And so if I circle the last one, do less than obsess. Aim for this. Do fewer things, do only one or two things, and then absolutely obsess. So before we turn the page on the left, why do some people perform great at work and others don't? That is the question, the issue of this book, and the answer is the best performers work smarter, not harder. That means they do less, fewer things, but obsess over the things they actually do. All right. Just very quickly, turn to page two. I'm just going to read a couple of these before we get to the lessons and takeaways. Why is this book worth our time? 
Number one, we know that a good work ethic may not be enough. This book defines the work smarter approach in a compelling and thorough way. Number two, we're seeing perpetual complaints about too many meetings. This book helps us understand how to aim for much more productive time in meetings. Fight and then unite. And number three, we sometimes do work activities without much to show in results. This book helps us understand how we can put results front and center in our work activities. Now to the back page, our lessons and takeaways. Uh, my handouts are, I never get to read all that I want to on them, and, and, and my, my technique is if a, an excerpt is in bold, I think it's a little more important, and if the font is extra big, it's the most important. So read these on your own. Bottom of the page, what are my lessons and takeaways? Number one, we've all got some learning to do. Find something to learn and learn. And number five, remember that pathos, the emotional appeal, may be as important as logos, the logical appeal. Maybe more important. Great at work, how top performers do less, work better, and achieve more. I hope you found this useful. Thank you very much.